So practice makes perfect. You know I'm going to start off with an example problem. I told you I was going to start with an example problem in the last video, didn't I? And we're looking at six more examples, and here they go. So problem number 15 says, give the major product from the reaction of HBr, which each of the following. All right, so they're limiting the reagent. It's just HBr. So H goes on one side, Br goes on the other. But we are just following this up with the whole discussion of carbocation rearrangement. So what they want me to do now is revisit some of these reactions. And they want me to go back and they want me to just double check, make sure carbocation rearrangement doesn't happen before I start slapping the products down on a sheet of paper. Okay, don't rush it. Just take your time with it. So they give me this alkene and they want me to react it with HBr. All right, so there we go. So I'm going to redraw the reagent, the starting reagent, just so you can see the process a little easier. There it is. And then I know the double bond is going to break. If you don't know that by now, you've not been paying attention and you've not been watching my videos. So double bond is going to break. Ching! Right there you go. Two sides of attachment open up. One's going to be here and one's going to be there. Well, the HBr, H goes on first, H plays with other hydrogens. What an awful little thing. And there we go. It has to go there. That's where most of the hydrogens were between the two carbons. Well, when we do that, a carbocation is formed, and that carbocation goes here. In the past, we've just slapped the bromine on it, and we went on to the next one. Eek! Put it in park. We're going to look at this structure, and we're going to say, will it move? That is the question I want you to always ask yourself. Will it move before you go to the next step of this reaction? So at this point, this carbon is a secondary carbocation. There's one to the left and one to the right. If it moves left-handed, then this is a tertiary carbocation. So, ding, 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 it will move. And if it moves, it has to switch spots with something, doesn't it? It has to switch spots with something. It just can't shift over and nothing else gets exchanged with it. And we have a hydrogen that is there. Hydrogens are always the go-to thing. They're always disposable. Get rid of those awful hydrogens. So the plus will shift here and that hydrogen will shift there. There you go. There's the one, two hydride shift that we discussed. And now that that carbocation is at that position, we are now able to bring in that bromine and that bromine will attack that positive charge and the bromine will go on at that spot. There you go, people. There's the product for that reaction. Well, up at the top, I could ask you to name that alkene. Can you do it? I hope so. Longest carbon chain that includes the double bond. One, two, three, four. Butene. Happens at number one. I can leave that off. And then if this is carbon one and that's carbon two and this is carbon three, then at three methyl, that's where my attachment's at, three methyl butene reacts with hydrobromic acid and it gives me a product. What's the product called? Longest carbon chain right there all the way across, but this is a butane, not a butene. If this is carbon one, this is carbon two. At carbon number two, I have a methyl group. At carbon number two, I have a bromo. So this is two bromo, two methyl, butane. Look at there, folks. What a beauty, marriage and process. I mean, all of this stuff is coming together. All of this stuff is falling in line. And now we actually see why we talked about the order of the lecture material that we did. B. Here we have a ring. And that ring has a double bond, CH2. We're going to react HBr to that. But you know what? I don't want you to get comfortable. We're going to change this up. Let's put HCl there instead. Folks, it happens the same way. No big deal. They're trying to trick me. 
but I'm not going to let them get by with it, am I? And you're not going to either. All right, so this is the starting reagent. I'm going to take this, and then I'm going to break the double bond. So, whoop, there it goes. Two sides of attachment open up. One's going to be on this carbon. One's going to be on that carbon. Well, hydrogen adds on first, just like always. There's no big deal. We're going to do Marky Mark. Marky Mark comes in, and the hydrogen says, Ooh, look, uh, some more little hydrogens over here. That's where I'm going to go. So that turns into a CH3 group, and that goes away. Now we've got a site of location that is right there. That, at this point in time, is a tertiary carbon. There's no reason for tertiaries to move. We can stop it right there. There's no better location for it to be. No rearrangement is going to happen. And a chloro goes on in that position. Well, I can go through and name this kind of, right? So can I name this? Well, let's kind of take a look. Uh, this one, kind of difficult to name. We've not really seen anything like this before, right? So this is not the vinyl group. That is not the owl group. You've got to be careful. Uh, this carbon is not part of the longest carbon chain. That's going to be the ring. So how on earth are we going to name that? We've not really talked about that yet. Down here at the bottom, I can name the product at least. So this is a cyclohexane ring. So cyclohexane, there we go. And then on carbon number one of the ring structure, I have a chloro group. So one chloro. And then I also have a methyl group at that position. So one chloro, one methyl, cyclo cyclohexane, or simply chloromethyl cyclohexane. All right, so let's use again our words and things that we've used in organic up to this point. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Oh, it makes me feel so good. All right, so here we get a ring structure. That ring structure, we're going to have a double bond here this time and a CH3 group that is there. This time, instead of adding HBr, like the question told me, or HCl, let's just do HI just to change it up one more time. No big deal. It works the same way whatever so here we get our product I'm just going to redraw the starting reagent first just so you can watch that action as we go through all right so HI gets added on to this alkene that double bond bink, breaks two sites of attachment open up here we get a site and there we get a site and then the hydrogen gets added on first now let's look up here at the very top this carbon Right, no hydrogens drawn. That carbon, there's four bonds already. So this has no hydrogens at all, period, on the left. All right, the one over here to the right hand side, this one, it's got three bonds, two from the double, one down below. So there is a hydrogen that is there. It's not drawn, but it's understood to be there. So hydrogen plays with other hydrogens, which means the hydrogen is going to go in that location. Well, because I can simplify this down, I'm just not even going to draw that hydrogen there. You can leave it if that's what you want to do. No big deal. I don't care. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to scream. If it makes you feel good, do it. All right. So on this location, this is where the iodine is going to come in. There we go. There's a product. That's all that's needed. Well, you're going to say, wait a minute. Why didn't you question the carbocation? I didn't have to. And the reason is because that carbon is a tertiary carbon. There is no reason for tertiaries to move. Even if there was another tertiary that was beside of it, there is no re reason for it to go through the extra effort to shift and move at any point in time. So if it's tertiary, it automatically goes there. I don't even question it at that point. However, yes... You should take my advice, and you should always question whether that carbocation will shift or not. Okay, part D. Got another one. CH3. CH. CH3 that points down. CH2. CH. Double bond. CH2. This time, though, I'm going to add water, okay, with a little bit of acid. Now, I drew water like this. Most of the time, it's going to be given to you as H2O, but I want you to keep in mind, these are the same rules that exist. There's no difference in them. We always look for rearrangement, no matter what we add in here, and water's no exception. We know what needs to go onto this molecule, H and then OH. All right, so let's do it. 
So with the product formation, what product would form? Okay, let me show my organic skills. So here is the starting reagent. Crick. There's the double bond. You never know what kind of sound effect I'm going to do when I break those, do you? And two sides of attachment open up, one here, one there. All right, so H goes on first. I'll look at those two carbons. Oh, hydrogen's going to be picky, and hydrogen's going to go over here. Oh, okay, well, that makes that happy. Good for it. And now we have a carbocation that has been formed at this location. Now what? Folks, always question rearrangement. So right now, this carbon is a secondary carbocation. There's one to the left and one to the right. If it moves right-handed, that's primary. It's not going to do that. That's silly. And then if it moves to the left, this is also a secondary carbocation. It's only attached to two other carbons. doesn't matter what else is after that. The next door neighbor is still secondary. Folks, that means that this is not going to rearrange. This is going to stay put. It's going to say, whatever, I don't need to do that extra work. I'm okay with what I've got. So this is going to be the site of the location for the incoming OH group. So it does not rearrange, and my OH group goes there. Let's talk about naming. Again, I always never want to assume any of these. The more practice, the better for everything. Longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five. Up at the top, this is a pentene with an E-N-E. -N -E. It's a one pentene because that double bond happens at that first carbon closest to the right-hand side, and that forces me to number it this way. Carbon number four, I find a methyl group. So this is four methyl pentene. All right, well, that's good enough. So four methyl pentene reacts with water in the presence of acid, did you see how smooth that was? Why don't you try to say that? 4-methylpentene reacts with water in the presence of acid. Folks, we're learning, right? This is good. This is good. We're talking the lingo. You're going to start singing in a minute to an organic chemist's ears. And we form a product. What is that product that we form? Well, let's take a look down here at the bottom. Can we name it? Yes, of course we can name it. What are you talking about? We're good. We can do this. Longest carbon chain. That includes the OH group. One, two, three, four. And I can go down for five or over for five. Doesn't matter. There's our five carbons in a line. One, two, three, four, five. So this is a pentane. All right. So this is the carbon that's number one, because that's closest to the OH group, which is my priority. At carbon number two, I see the OH group. All right, so that means at carbon number two, I see the OH group. This is not a pentane. This is a pentanol, because that is where the OH group is listed. The alcohol ends in OL, so therefore pentanol ends in OL as well. Carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five. Carbon number four... I have get a methyl group, so this is 4-methyl to a pentanol. 4-methyl pentene reacts with water in the presence of acid to produce 4-methyl to pentanol. I mean, that would be very impressive to anybody, I think, if, if you were able to just ramble it off that way. And you can. You can at this point. Trust yourself. You can do it. All right, so let's do another example. CH2, double bond, CH, and then a carbon with a CH3 that points up and a CH3 that points over and a CH3 that goes down. And this time, let's react this with propanol. All right, just to change it up a little bit, CH3, CH2, CH2, OH, in the presence of acid. Again, the directions told me HBr, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what I want to do. Again, just one more time to show you that these rules apply to everything that we've learned about so far at this point. All right, so I'm going to redraw the reagent like normal. CH2, double bond. CH, carbon, and I got a methyl group up and a methyl group over and a methyl group down. Okay, so we know the drill. Double bond, geek, breaks. Two sites of attachment open up, one here, one there. 
Right. Well, if I take a look at the alcohol, I still treat it just like all the others. Hydrogen goes on first, and then the remaining piece goes on next. Well, hydrogen goes on first. Hydrogen comes in, snarls its nose up, and says, hmm, where do I want to go today? Well, if I go left, I get two hydrogens. If I go right, I get one hydrogen. Hydrogen plays with other hydrogens. It's forced to go there. So we've just taken care of that hydrogen. There we go. It's now CH3. Well, in doing so, this has formed a carbocation over on the right-hand side. And that carbocation is going to go, er, wait a minute. Now's the time for me to rearrange and get my life together. I'm going to have to figure out if I can better order myself in some way, some form, some fashion. And the answer is yes, it can. Right now, this is a secondary carbocation. If it goes left, it's primary. Uh-uh, not, not the good, right? You don't want to go there. That's going backward in life. You want to go forward in life. You want to improve yourself. Okay, so over here on the right-hand side, at this point in time, it's really a quaternary. It's attached to four carbons. But keep in mind that if shifts happen, something has to switch. So this would end up being a tertiary if we switch a methyl group, because that's the only choices that it has. It has no hydrogens. We can't do a 1-2 hydride shift. We have to do a 1-2 methyl shift here. That's the only way that this is going to work. So, yes, we can. We can switch the carbocation with a methyl group and switch those positions. And if we do that, a 1-2 methyl shift will happen at this point, and that will allow me to get my tertiary carbocation, which is more preferred. So I'm going to erase the carbocation, and then I'm going to erase this methyl group. All right, so I need to draw the methyl group that goes here, and my carbocation now goes there. Switcheroo! There we go. That's the thing we told you you had to watch out for in every example from this point on, and it happened here. Now that that is switched, this carbocation is now full-blown tertiary, and you see that. One to the left, one up above, one to the right. So this is going to be the site of location for my incoming alcohol piece that was remaining. And that piece is that oxygen first, because that's where I cleaved those two pieces. So that's going to be the side of attachment. And then CH2 and CH2 and CH3. Now the question is, can we name it? Yes, of course we can name it. We can't name it common. The reason is there's no way that we can come up with a common name that is this entire thing on the left-hand side of that oxygen. There's no way that we can do that, not easily at least. So we're going to name this using the IUPAC rules, not the common nomenclature rules. All right, so in the IUPAC rules, we need the longest carbon chain. The longest carbon chain is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? I can go straight across, or I can go across and down. That gives me four, but we'll keep it simple, and we'll just go straight across with this thing. So there we go. That means that this is a butane. Well, a number closest to the side that has this O group, because that's somewhat different than some of our traditional alkyls, like methyl and ethyl and propyl and so forth. So this is carbon one, and this is carbon two. That's carbon three, and this is carbon four. All right, so at carbon number two, I have a methyl group. I'm just going to jot these over to the side. So at carbon two, I have a methyl. At carbon number three, I have another methyl. That means that together, this is going to be a 2,3-di-methyl. Keep in mind, every substituent needs a number, even if it's the same number. They all need to be represented. So 2,3-dimethyl is going to be there. But that's still an M. So alphabetizing, is there something else that comes next? Well, on carbon-2, I have something else as well. I have this OCH2CH2CH3 group. And if you go back and remember how we named it that type of group, there's three carbons. So this is a prop because there's three of them. And then the O is going to stand for oxy. So this is a propoxy at carbon number two. 
Well, J-K-L-M-N-O-P. M comes first, doesn't it? So therefore, we'll write it first in the nomenclature. So that means that this is a 2,3-dimethyl, 2-propoxy-butane. Folks, there you go. There's the IUPAC for an ether. Again, we cannot common name this because if we did, there was no way that we could easily come up with a common name on the left-hand side of that carbon or in this way, the diagrams kind of pointed up. So above the oxygen, not to the left. But you get my drift. You know what I mean by that. All right, so there's another example. It just wrapped up everything in total. I keep it cumulative. That's what we do. And then we finally do F. All right, so for F, I get another ring. They love these rings because they really think that they do a number to me and make me really confused. I don't know why, whatever. Okay, so we've done really an example of each one. We did water, right? We did an alcohol, no big deal. Uh, we did uh, HBr, we did HCl, we did HI. So we've really done a, an example of each one of these. Uh, in this case, I'll do another alcohol just to show you that they could look a little nastier, but it's really going to be the same thing. So with this alcohol, let's do this one. We'll do a carbon here, and I'll do a CH3 like that, and a CH3 like this, and this is a CH. So this is isopropanol, or isopropyl alcohol, sorry, isopropyl alcohol, or 2-propanol. And we'll react that with a little bit of acid. There we go. So the reason I did this is because it's not a straight chain. It seems like everything that we've done so far, methanol, ethanol, propanol, has been a straight chain alcohol. Uh, well, if it's not straight chain, it still works. The procedure is still the same. Not a big deal. So don't let that confuse you. Uh, I'll eventually start off with my reagent, just like normal. So here we go. There we start. So this is going to be in two parts, just like always, and that two part right there. So hydrogen will come on first, but in order to do that, this double bond kink has to break and two sides of attachment open up. There's going to be one here and there's going to be one there. All right, well, if I take a look at these two carbons, uh, these two carbons, I get one here and I get one there. Uh, the one to the left... Uh, that is three bonds right now, so there is one hydrogen here. And the one to the right-hand side, there's three bonds there, so there's a hydrogen understood to be there. So it does it actually matter to hydrogen? It can go either or. The problem, though, is that this will make a different compound. Depending on where this hydrogen goes, it will make a different compound here. And the problem is that it has no preference right now. That hydrogen has no preference. So we'll do one, and we'll explain that. And then I'll go back and do the other. That way you can see the difference. All right, so let's just put the hydrogen down here at the bottom. There we go. All right, so in doing so, we're just going to erase that off because we know that it's understood to be there. It saves us some trouble. It makes the diagram a little bit cleaner. And then on this side, we have a carbocation that gets formed. Right now, this is secondary. If it moves down, it's secondary. If it moves up, it's secondary. It does not need to shift. So it's going to stay at that location. Not a big deal for it. And the incoming group is going to be that oxygen because that's where I made the split. So that oxygen is going to attach first. And then off of that oxygen, I've got a carbon with a carbon that goes up like that and a carbon that goes down like that, an isopropyl group. So I can draw that in a skeletal way. And there we go. I've just made an ether. Okay. Now, can we IUPAC name this? We've not really talked about how to properly IUPAC something like this. So no. Can we commonly name it? No, not really. If that methyl group was not on that ring, we could call this cyclohexyl isopropyl ether right? But that methyl group is on the ring, and I don't really know how to common name that either. So this is one of those cases where I would not ask you to do something like that. All right, so that's one choice. That's one choice only. 
The problem, though, is that we've got another choice here that will give us another type of product. And I have to be careful with that. I have to kind of show that process happening. So that double bond is going to break just like before. Two sites of attachment open up just like before. We put hydrogen on the bottom, but let's put hydrogen here at this time. Maybe that's what you decided to do, right? I mean, it didn't have a preference, did it? No, it didn't. So you could have done something like that. Is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. This is a possible choice. So I'm going to erase that hydrogen and that bond. We know that it's supposed to be there, so it's understood. And then that is a carbocation. If it goes left, it's still secondary. If it goes right, it's still secondary. There's no reason in that to move. So that is the spot that this other incoming group is going to come on. And this is the oxygen. And then there's the carbon that it's attached to. And here's the isopropyl group in its full. If you notice, these two are different. These two are different. Here, I have the methyl group and this isopropoxy group. That is what we call that, isoprop and then oxy. These two are one carbon apart. This would be one isopropyl, or propoxy, sorry, one isopropoxy, three methyl cyclohexane. On this side, the methyl group and the isopropoxy group are directly opposite of each other. This is spot one and four. So this would be one isopropoxy, four methyl cyclohexane. These two are different. And I'm going to get both. So it says, give the major product obtained from the reaction of HBr with each of the following. Well, we just kind of made up our own rules as we went. But folks, I'm going to have to list both of these down because there is no rhyme or reason at this point that we know of. That's what I'm going off of. At this point, what we know of, there's no rhyme or reason on why one of these would be preferred over the other one. Now, is there a major product in the minor product? The answer is yes, there is. If you want to think about a little bit of structure, a little bit of three-dimensional shape, a little bit of crowding, then this might tell you which one's going to be more preferred over the other one. But we haven't really brought that into our discussion. We could, but that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. So both of these are going to be written down as possibilities. Both of these could exist. A major and a minor product is out there. Which one is it? Well, we've told you before, molecules don't like to be crowded. And you can use that as the decision to go by. And if you look at the 1-4 position, this spreads apart those groups a little bit more than this one does. Maybe you didn't tie that information together in this reaction. If not, that's okay. Because I would give you credit for either one of these at this point. Okay? All right. So there's our example of these questions. Hopefully this is getting a little bit better for you. Hopefully, as we did more of these examples, they got a little bit easier. You could maybe predict some of these products before I could even spout out the answer. And if so, that's great. Good for you. That's what I want you to do. And in the next video, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about more reactions. So we've done three. We've done the addition of a halogen halide. We've done the addition of water. We've done the addition of an alcohol, but there's more. There's more. What are those? You'll figure that out in the next video.